okay uh, welcome everyone so now we are going to do some data collection but before i do the data collection i would like to show you how the machine would look like rupesh if you could come close right so this is our in house x ray diffractometer single crystal diffractometer that's a uh, source from broker it's a copper wavelength source which is 1.5 angstroms and the goniometer and the detector is from mar 345 dtb so it's a dtb detector so it's not a ccd detector and it's a circular detector now if you would see the the circular detector so it's a circular de detector yes that's good now you also have the square detector right so now how to choose which detector is better so it's like uh, everybody has their own uh, thought process like the square is better or uh, the circular is better there are like different uh, schools of thoughts but if you have this square detector especially for the high resolution data towards the corner you get those uh, uh, high resolution spots that's the advantage right i'll also explain the importance of that square detector um, in a different segment uh, in this video itself right okay now what we are going to do i'm going to uh, mount some lysozyme crystals which we had grown okay now what we also are going to do we are also going to test the cryo now what do why do we need a cryo yes so we need the cryo to uh, pre uh, prevent the crystal uh, or to prevent the water to seep into the crystal channels right i had already explained you or uh, no no not already explained i will explain you uh, from uh, the diagrammatic representation like what those uh, solvent uh, channels are and how does they look like now by using the cryoprotectant you prevent that water to freeze over into the uh, the crystal channels now you can imagine in the cracks of the building right especially the places where it's very cold if the water seeps into and if the temperature freezes right then what happens that crack widens now you can imagine the crystal again those channels the water is there and then uh, uh, if there is no cryoprotectant then it will freeze freeze over and the water will expand and it will disrupt the crystal quality so we definitely need to uh, you know uh, have to use a good cryoprotectant else you will start getting ice rings now what kind of ice rings uh, do you get to do this what i am going to do i am going to put uh, my loop into the water now how does my loop look like it is pretty much like this right you have to come closer rupesh huh? so i will use this background to show it so this is a loop right so that's uh, the base then there is the pin and on top of the pin which you will not be able to see in the uh, the mobile but i will uh, show you in an image how does it look like it pretty much looks like a tennis racket at the at the top right it looks like a loop like this a tennis racket or a badminton racket if you would see then it, uh, it will be there so i'll uh, don't worry i am going to show you how does that loop look like in a image yeah now this is some water oh sorry so this is some water over here right i'm going to dip this pin into this water and i'm going to mount it then what happens now if you would see there is a, a continuous cryo stream going on can you see that cryo stream rupesh please focus over there can you see there is a cryo stream so that's liquid nitrogen now uh, if uh, i can take you here you have to come on this side this is the main liquid nitrogen storage which is connected to a smaller storage and from here it goes back into the machine right now once it goes back into this machine it comes from here so you have to zoom into where i am showing right so i am going to show you it comes from here and it gets sucked from here so that ensures that there is a continuous flow of liquid nitrogen is maintained from here to here and then if this continuous suction is not there then you get turbulence like this everywhere and then liquid nitrogen goes everywhere also on the detector so it's not good and also the other parts they go brittle 
so the continuous uh, uh, suction is required for the um, this um, uh, the data collection right or continuous flow of the liquid nitrogen not the data collection now if you feel here this tube is quite cold i can already feel it i cannot uh, make you experience that coldness over here but if i'm stopping it there is a lot of liquid nitrogen turbulence over there so what i am going to do i am going to dip this pin into this water so it goes into this water like this here and then i am going to mount it now before i mount it i have to take this guaniometer up now that's the guaniometer guaniostat head on which you mount the crystal and then you can rotate your crystal to collect at all the stuff so i'm going to move it up yeah and it stops all by itself and then i'm going to make sure that it is dipped into the water yeah and then i am going to mount it yeah so it's nicely mounted yeah so it's nicely mounted on the board. it's a magnetic head so we just you know clicks over uh, that pin into that uh, so goniometer right so gonio uh, head so it just sticks into uh, over there okay so i'm just going to to get it now uh, rupesh i want you to focus here onto that image there if you could see the loop there is a water inside and it is frozen yeah because why because there is a liquid nitrogen uh, flowing uh, from top to the bottom through the crystal right now this is the uh, i would like to show you another important part that is the beam stop right now uh, i am not touching the beam stop because you don't want to mess around with the uh, the alignment of the beam stop it's over there have you got it rupesh yeah now what is the function of this beam stop so um, it is going to prevent any unnecessary radiation going on to the detector my image plate over here yeah you don't want to overexpose it you want your crystal uh, the the exposure or uh, the extra radiation to reach the plate only when you say i expose my crystal right okay so now let's get it back in place right so you also focus on uh, that one where you can see now here what you will see already my water is nice and frozen see that's that's what i meant my loop looks like a tennis racket can you see which was not if there is a uh, say uh, high uh, so magnification camera installed over there uh, close to my uh, crystal which is uh, showing me image over here and it looks like a tennis racket and it's the water filled inside and because of the surface tension uh, exhibited by the water you will see that it is nicely uh, bulged out so it's like frozen water and it's liquid nitrogen and you can see i can move this crystal bit back and forth i can and i can turn also this uh, crystal with this head right now okay now i had mounted my crystal what do i do next the next important thing is the centering okay so i'm uh, going to uh, say cut this video here right and i'm going to tell you the importance of the the centering okay so now we had mounted the crystal now we also know what is the importance of centering the crystal now let's try to see if we are able to center the crystal okay now rupesh you have to come closer so i have to climb up a bit so there is this allen key yeah which, which you can see and there is this uh, male female uh, kind of key system what you will see over there so it's uh, on this uh, guaniostat 
uh, uh, yeah, over here, right? So it fixes like this. Yeah, it fixes like this. Okay, so this is where my beam is on this cross section. So my whole uh, objective is to get this crystal here at all angles. Okay, so if it is, uh, I have to move the crystal front and backward. So I move it this way. Now I have to get, uh, so at whatever uh, is the current position of, uh, uh, of phi, so I have to get it in the center. So I will move this Allen key and get it between the crosshair. Like this. I take the Allen key again and then I move it 90 degree. So see, like this, almost like this. So at all the angles it has to come in the center. So I have to slightly take it above again. Like this. I move it again, right? So let's take it a little bit. Like this, and then I do it again. like this. So now if you would see if, if I move the complete rotation, so all the time my loop stays in the beam. This is what is exactly is the crystal centering I meant, right? Whatever angle you move, your crystal is not going out of the beam, right? Can you see even if I am moving the entire uh, 360 degree, so it is not going anywhere. Let's let me show you again. Are you getting it, uh, Rupesh? Yes, it looks good. Yes, that's good. Okay, so now uh, we had mounted our crystal. Now we have to test it. So, but then before I uh, say open my source, I have to close this lead panel. Yeah. So you don't want to be exposed. Yes, so you don't want to be exposed uh, uh, with the radiation, so you have this lead panel like this and then close it. Okay, now we are safe and we are good to go for the exposure. So that we will be doing here at the protein terminal. Yeah. Yeah, so that's our control uh, panel system. So uh, this is uh, the panel from where we will be controlling our machine. So that's our software already open for you. For different machines, you will get different software, so it's okay. But some of the basic stuff remains the same. So here, of course, you are defining the path where you are going to save all of the, uh, the images. The image route. Now this is important which uh, I think you have to be sensible in defining the image route because this is the image head which will say the image 1, 2, 3. So if I have to collect like 10 images for water then it will be water underscore IMG1 underscore IMG2 underscore IMG3. So water is preceding all of them so we know to which particular data set it belongs to. That's the exposure time. That's like, uh, where do you start? Now the number of images, like right now I'm going to have only one. Yes, so one is good. And my first number is, uh, image number is one. And then this delta phi, right? So uh, what is my oscillation angle? Right, so, so I'm going to uh, stop uh, this uh, segment here and then I'm going to explain what oscillation angle is. Okay, now as I had already explained you the oscillation angle, the other parameters are quite standard, so we are not changing anything. And then we have to say go, right? And then there is also one more go. So we had already turned on the, the source over there. After I 
press go here we have we need to go out right so we don't want to stay and that's the protocol what we follow here so uh, we don't have to stay in this room we have to go out so we will abide by the protocol so i'll just say go we'll stop the video and then we will go out and once the exposure is done we'll come back again and we'll show you how the image uh, ice rings uh, for the water would look like so shall i press the go okay okay so now it is done uh, our water test is done so now we are going to uh, remove it and we are going to test our cryo right so instead of water we are just going to put cryo over there okay fine so i am going to slowly remove it without touching the beam stop that's very important so it has come out right and uh, it's melted already so i just wanted to show you that it was frozen water right so it is there so i will get my cryo so uh, i have two cryo systems here so i we can test only one for the demonstration purpose so we can have so this is like with 30% glycerol yeah so i'm going to take it and with the 30% glycerol system yeah this is ph5 glycerol so uh, all the conditions which we had during the crystallization this is having like 30% glycerol in it yeah, okay and then we are going to dip it in yeah so so i'm just simply dipping it we are testing the cryo okay and then i'm going to mount it again right and i'm going to get it back here right so now we need that allen key again because we have to center this system again so i'm going to put it here and i'm going to get it here I'm going to turn it now see look at the difference so let me get it in the center and then show you yeah see this it looks so shiny very clear like glass so it's a very good cryo right it's a very good cryo so and I'm, i'm going to get in the center again like this and i'm going to get it in the center again yeah so during the entire rotation the, the loop should be in front of the beam yeah you see for the entire rotation my beam is there okay so now that is uh, being taken care so we'll uh, close the panels one more time yeah it's closed yeah it's completely closed now let's reach the gap and then we have to prime the source so shutter 1 so the shutter 1 is on now so we are going back to the system so now we are going to test the cryo so i had kept everything the things will be saved in the same folder and the image root is going to be like uh, cryo the, this is like 30% glycerol so i had written 25 so i'll just edit it to 
30 so it is 30 percent glycerol so i had said like gly so all the subsequent images which i will collect uh, will be like underscore image one underscore image two and will be having the image root head as cryo 30 gly now i am just collecting only one image right so let's say let's say go and say go over there and it's active so we have to go out now again right so this is how the image looks like now um, the previous image what you had seen was uh, uh, the the ice rings what i had showed you for the water and this is like for the cryo very clean image right so the no interference from the ice rings right uh, so it's very important that you have a very good cryo so the water uh, is not going to interfere with your data set and what you said is i told you this horizontal line there's the beam stop which you will always see you don't want to mess around with the centering of this beam stop so better not to touch it so um, then there will be a lot of uh, hard work to realign it okay so now what i'm going to do as for fun i'm going to mount the lysozyme crystal without any cryoprotectant right just for fun to see like what happens does or whatever the cryo stuff what i was talking about is really holds true or not okay so let's do it okay so uh, now what we had done i had mounted some lysozyme crystals without cryoprotectant right so now as uh, it is required so i have to uh, you know uh, get it uh, center the crystal so i have to get the crystal in front of the uh, the beam yeah so there was there was no cryo protectant so it's all ecosystem yeah so see it is gone can you see that crystal already so i'm uh, like getting it back yeah so let's get the crystal bit in the beam so i'm adjusting a bit like that yeah it is gone so i have to get it in front of the beam again like this so it has gone up again so i will get it in the beam one more time yeah so it is gone here so up it goes we have to get the crystal every time it goes out of the beam so you just have to get it back in the beam this states although there are two crystals but what i wanted to show you it, it should do the job okay so let's try to close the panel again one more time and then we close it and then we turn the shutter on again that's done okay and then we have to go to edit yeah so uh, we are going to change the image root head again so it is going to be the lysozyme yeah and then i say no cryo okay then again i start with the first image and i'm going to just collect the first image so only one image let's say um, one minute exposure or to show you better let's make it two minute exposure yeah so let it be two minute exposure because it's a protein crystal so it might not diffract that well and then you just say go yeah 
and say go and then we have to go out and wait for two minutes. Okay, so this is the two minute exposure for our lysozyme crystal. All you will see are those spots what you have got. So it's a nice diffracting crystal, so it's good. But we haven't used any cryo. So can you see here? So this, these are the the ice rings what you have got. Now, if you um, you would say like, do I see it? Does it matter? It does matter, right? These ice uh, uh, see these ice rings does matter. And if you say when you are processing the data, you can make use of the the option like delete ice rings. You can delete them, but then all your data spots corresponding to that ice rings also are gone. So you have one ice ring here, one there, one there, and this is your beam stop, right? Center of the uh, uh, the beam, center of the beam, not beam stop. Th that's your beam stop, and this is the center of the beam. As you go away from the center of the beam, the resolution becomes better and better. I'll show you in terms of the uh, the resolution rings. This is like. Close to the center of the beam, it is like uh, almost 34 angstroms. So here it says like 33.84 angstroms. And as you are going away, you are getting uh, 2.59 angstroms. How we can have the higher resolution uh, um, data collection? I'll show you in a minute. But we, we just have to uh, adjust the distance of the detector from the crystal. Because our crystal is fixed. So if you move the detector bit away, then you also can uh, are capable of collecting the the spots to higher resolution. Now, even at 2.59 angstroms, in that close to that shell, you see there are some spots, right? Now you can move away the detector. I'll show you on the machine what do you do by what do you mean by moving the detector away from the crystal. Uh, so then you will be able to uh, have the better resolution. Okay. Now. I'll just uh, get rid of this uh, resolution shell. Yeah, here. Now, you get multiple ice rings. So you have one here, one here, one here. I can see it. I'm not sure if I, I'm able to make it out to you on this in this uh, video. But there is one also on the higher shell. Now, if I say I delete these ice rings, right? Delete these ice rings, then. Uh, my those data points even at the higher resolution shell are lost right um, so um, if the, the ice ring is very prominent then you definitely lose a lot of data points and of course uh, that uh, if uh, there is no proper cryoprotectant then the crystal uh, packing is disturbed because you have that water into the uh, crystal channels so that has to be taken care okay so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the lysozyme crystal into the cryoprotectant and mount it again, right? So we'll resume the video once I had mounted the crystal by doing the cryoprotectant, right? All the handling and all, uh, I'll show you in a different, uh, we'll, I'll record it in a different segment uh, section and we'll append it. Okay, okay. so now uh, I had mounted uh, my lysozyme crystal, so I had exposed it to the cryo, uh, uh, the cryoprotectant and then uh, now I had mounted it, so I am going to center it one more time. So let's do the job, yeah, like this, okay, and I am going to turn it, right, so then I have to get it back in the front of the beam, turn it, it has gone up again, so I have to get it down, slowly it is becoming clear, right, as it is getting centered, yeah, and it has gone down again, so I will get it back up again, and I am going to center it again okay. right so you, you have to center it so that it stays you know uh, in front of the beam for all the rotation so it is gone bit off right so you can see nicely there is a square 
pistol sitting in the loop yeah you just have to focus did you get it yeah and let's see if it is centered it is uh, yes it is there in front of the crosshair like this and it's nice and uh, crystal clear so there is no frosty stuff so our cry protectant looks good so time uh, the moment of the truth so we close the panel one more time like this and we also close the third panel okay then turn on the shutter okay back to the control board okay so then we go to edit and this is like light design yeah light design cry so we just this is with cryo and then of course we start with first image is image number 1 oh sorry and then um, we are going to do the exposure for 2 minutes or maybe we increase it to 3 minutes just for fun right and let's see how the spots go and we the two things what we have to see here we have to see the our diffraction spots for lysozyme and also Uh, we have to see if our, uh, there are ice rings so they we tested our cryo it was good right which was like with 30% glycerol in it yes so it looked very clean now the same cryo protectant we had used so we had fished the crystal put it in the cryo protectant fished it again and mounted in front of the uh, the beam okay so now let's see so let's say we go and we go again in 3 minutes we will know uh, or say next 5 minutes 3 uh, minutes of exposure and 2 minutes of scanning then we will know the uh, how it is right okay so we'll see after uh, it is done okay so this is the data the the frame what we had collected for uh, our uh, lysozyme with cryo now can you see our the entire detector is very clean no ice springs are there and uh, this is the, i haven't changed any detector distance so i haven't played uh, anything with the the resi resolution so it is still 250 mm uh, so that's the resolution so it is diffracting up to you see spots till the edge up to 2.6 angstrom so that's an indication that it will diffract even better can you see here so uh, up to 2.6 angstroms you will you are seeing the spots so it is going to diffract better so whenever you are going to collect the actual data you um, you change the detector distance from the crystal and that's how you can also get the spots in the higher data right so uh, once this is done then you go back to uh, let's say edit now you did, uh, collect four frames at 0 90 180 and 270 degrees you process them you run the strategy right i am going to put another segment of running the strategy using the four images and then it will recommend uh, what angle you should collect the data in at what resolution what oscillation angle not resolution angle oscillation angle that's extremely important you follow the strategy so more details i will put in the strategy uh, the the strategy segment uh, talking more about the oscillation angle and then uh, it will be um, the you take the recommendation of the strategy and come back uh, then the exposure time depending upon your own experience you decide image then this is what is the increment like your if your strategy says 0.5 degree angle so then you uh, say uh, increase with uh, uh, say 0.5 depending upon what oscillation angle has been told right so all of that thing i will put in the uh, strategy segment for now i am going to sign off uh, goodbye for now